Hey everyone, it is Sunday, January 12th, and I've decided to pick up my camera today and maybe even tomorrow and do a vlog of a few days around here because I have some knitting that I really, really wanted to share and I don't think I'm going to have time to do a sit down podcast this week. They seem to take me a little bit more time to put together and creates a little bit of a mess. And so I thought it might be fun to just pick up my camera and share a few things that have been going on around here, including my knitting projects. So that's my plan. I hope you guys are having a wonderful start to the new year. We're 12 days in and we've had one full week back at school and into normal scheduling. And it was really, really good. But the last day or two, it's been rainy and gloomy and I haven't felt motivated to stick to schedules and routines. And so I'm trying to do that. And I thought picking up my camera might help me a little bit and I can share some of the ideas that I have for this new year. So that's my plan. I hope I have enough to kind of put together and it's interesting and I'm excited to share a few things with you guys. Let's start off with some knitting because I have two and a half finished objects, which is very unusual for me, and I'm so excited to share them. So the first one is this pair of socks. It is the Cozy Knitter Advent Socks from 2019, and it's what I was knitting on throughout Vlogmas. I didn't finish it quite in time, but I finished it now, and I am so happy with them. They are beautiful. They are the 24 stripes and you can knit a stripe a day if you want. I did two socks at a time but on different needles. So I really really like that. I think I'm going to try to do that from now on with any socks because now I don't have to cast on the second one and start all over again. So I'm loving this project. Um, I thought I would share what I do for my socks because I did have a few questions throughout Vlogmas. I just do a basic vanilla sock and the one that I use, um, and it's the one I started with, was by Susan B. Anderson. If you Google how I make my socks, Susan B. Anderson, you will find it on her blog. I'm not sure if she has it on a website. Um, it's not a PDF or on Ravelry or anything, but you can find the instructions and print them off. Super easy. Um, I cast on 64 stitches on a 2.25 needle. My favorite needles at the moment, I do change sometimes, but I'm loving these DPN needles from Knit Pro. They are the Zings in the 2.25, I said. Um, and so I cast on 64 stitches. I do a bit of a two by two rib on, until I just can't do any more. I usually do about an inch and a half or two inches, depending on how I feel. And for these socks, I used a contrast cream yarn for the cuffs, heels, and toes, and I just follow her recipe for the vanilla sock. So I really, really love them. I'm really excited to um, give them a bit of a soak because I've got a bit of a, kind of like a, a marking here from where my needles were connected. And that's just my tension, and I think they'll be totally fine when I soak them a little bit. So I'm going to wear these this year and next Christmas. I cannot wait to have finally a finished pair. I do have my um, Advents, my Advent socks from last year, which I might pick up as well. But um, as soon as I finished these, I picked up another sock that I had already on the needles. I put it back into one of my pouches. This is my leather, the larger everyday or well, not every day, but it's the larger leather pouch. And I love this yarn. And so I picked up, I think I might have been somewhere around here. I was close to finishing this first sock, so I picked up this one because I love the yarn. I finished it in the last few days and I just closed up the toe this morning. This is a scrumptious pearl yarn in, I think, it's possibly one of my favorite colors that she's done. I think it's called Pool Party, but when I looked at it on Ravelry, I think it came up as Poolside, so I'm not quite sure, um, but it's so beautiful. Such a fun colorway. I cast these on when we were on vacation, and I'm using the same needles, same sock recipe. Um, I just love self-striping yarn. It's so much fun, 
and I'm really excited to cast on the second one. I have gotten totally back into sock knitting after a really long time of not caring for it at all. Um, I think some of my friends that knit socks got me back into it when I saw them a little while ago. They were all working on beautiful socks and I just want to have more in my wardrobe. I've also been super inspired by Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, I subscribe to Chelsea's Patreon, which is Chelsea Makes, and she has totally been into sock knitting lately, and she really inspired me as well. Watching her knit on her Advent socks kind of kept me going on mine, and she is just knitting and knitting socks. So kind of following her lead. I'm super into it right now. And I have quite a few yarns that I've already wound up and worked on the first sock. So I think this is going to be the time for me to finish them and just get them off the needles, which will be really exciting. So those are my sock projects, one finished object, one half object. And I am so excited that I have this off the needles as well. This is my snuggle down cowl. I cast this on on Christmas Eve and I just finished it last night and I absolutely love it. It is the snuggle down cowl pattern by Jules Hill from So Sweet Violet. I chose seven of the mini skeins from my Legacy Fiber Arts advent calendar that you probably saw me open if you watched Vlogmas. And I just picked seven colors that I really, really loved together and they were perfect from the get-go. I loved this all the way through. It's so much fun to knit. But once I hit this part where I introduced the green, I couldn't stop knitting it. I just thought it was perfect. It's, I don't know, it's just like a beautiful, beautiful knit. I tried it on. It's also a great size and I think it's also perfect for um, running in and out of heated shopping centers and homes and um, you're not like it's it's just the perfect size it's warm but it's not too warm so that when you go into the grocery store you are boiling it's just a really nice size I think it's perfect so that is my last finished object I'm so happy with it I feel really accomplished and I think this is just what I needed to start off my January and just continue to plug away on some small projects because I think it's the bigger ones that kind of slow me down and I lose interest. So last night I pulled out some yarn for a new project. As soon as the cowl was done, I knew I wanted to cast on a hat. I've wanted to make the Cobook hat by Caitlin Hunter for a really long time. It's just a beautiful, um, patterned hat with some bobbles and I pulled out the perfect bag. I've been waiting to use this project bag that was from the kit that I did with Maria from Woolen Forest and I pulled out some beautiful yarn. So this is what I'm going to be using for the Kobo hat. This is the Cozy Toes base from Legacy Fiber Arts in the color Antique Lace. I just thought it would be such a pretty soft color, especially paired with their cloud base, which is a mohair in, what color was this one? I can't remember. Antique lace is that one. And this one is vanilla bean. So I think it's going to make such a soft and beautiful Kobo cat. I thought the bag was perfect, and I've even pulled out the charms that came with our kit by Maria from Forest Charm. I think I said Woolen Forest before, but she's Woolen Forest on Instagram, and she's Forest Charm on Etsy, and I thought these are perfect to pull out for this project. So my plan is to just keep doing some small projects, enjoy them. Um, and I have another project that I might share later that I'm waiting to cast on, but I don't want to get ahead of myself, put too many things on the needles, but I do um, have a beautiful yarn set aside for another cowl pattern.
morning. It is Monday and I did not film as much as I had planned to yesterday because we just got really, really busy. I think the first week of being back at school and a new soccer routine for James went really, really well, but it totally caught up to us by Sunday. Everyone seemed really, really tired. And I had quite a bit of homework to do with Camden because he is nearing the end of his first semester and exams are coming, assignments are due. James had futsal for soccer last night. And so we decided to go out for dinner and had a bit of a relaxing and quiet night, which was much needed. But I really love that saying, a Sunday well spent brings a week of content. And I do not feel like yesterday did that for me. I usually love Mondays. I love a fresh start and a clean slate to the week. But I'm not feeling it this morning. I've kind of been not sure of what to do first. So I'm just going to make myself a cup of coffee and try to get myself organized and start again. So I've taken out some cookbooks to look for some inspiration this week because I know last week I was really struggling with dinners. I was totally uninspired, exhausted. And this week I don't wanna find myself struggling at four or five o'clock with what to make. So I've got a few books out. I'm going to make a list for grocery shopping and head out to the store this morning, set myself up for the week. Um, I've got a new something that I wanted to share because I have a new idea. I think I'm going to try to wake up maybe 30 minutes earlier than I normally do before the first one of the boys has to get up so that I have a few extra minutes to myself to enjoy my coffee and knit a few rows and um, enjoy something else that I'm going to share next. One of my goals this year is to find time or make time to read a little bit more. I have some wonderful books that I really want to dive into and I'd like to start a morning routine of waking a little bit earlier, making my coffee and before I do anything else, especially start thinking about what needs to be done for the day, just take some time for myself and read the daily entries in this book. It is called Simple Abundance. You've probably heard of it. Um, it's a revised and updated edition, and it is the 365 days to a balanced and joyful life. So each day, I like to open it up to that day and just read it and enjoy it and kind of just take a few moments for myself. I'm really looking forward to this new practice. I didn't do it today, and I just got the book. I think I got it on Friday. I had actually seen it on the Allie Edwards um, Instagram account. I really love following Allie's stories and I noticed that she was reading it this year and she's also putting down a quote in one of her journals. I think she has a journal just de dedicated to it. So I loved the idea. I ordered the revised edition and I'm really looking forward to starting this morning practice for myself. I've taken out a few cookbooks for some inspiration and wanted to share. This is a new one that I got about a week or so ago. I was at Chapters with the Kids and it was in the clearance section for $12. It's called What Katie Ate on the Weekend. It is a beautiful, beautiful book. She is a food blogger and photographer and all of these photos were taken by her. It's absolutely stunning. And there are lots of recipes in here that I will make, but it's also a book that I will just enjoy picking up and flipping through. And this is the first recipe I marked off because I think I'm going to try and make this one and keep it in the fridge for Glenn's lunches and for mine as well. It looks really, really nice. It's a farro with feta, lemon, and pine nuts. It looks pretty simple. This is one of my favorite cookbooks and I haven't taken it out in a while. It is The Simple Bites Kitchen by Amy Wimbush Bork. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but she is a Canadian chef and um, I really love her recipes. So I just went through and kind of marked a few potential ones. I know the kids would really like some chicken strips, so I marked that one. 
I like to bake things at this time of year so that the kids have something to eat after school so they seem starving. And this whole wheat chocolate chunk zucchini bread looked really nice. Um, I just marked the Caesar salad to kind of remind me to do a Caesar salad for the kids this week too because they love that. And I think I'm going to try this one pot shrimp and pea orzo. I'm so happy that James is finally into shrimps like the rest of us, so it makes it a lot easier to plan that into a dinner. I've got a couple of other ones that I'm considering. This is from the Half-Baked Harvest Cookbook. This is by Tegan Gerard. It's the first book of hers that I have, or her first book. This is the second one that a lot of people are cooking from right now. And can I just say that this little thing that I pulled out of one of the boys' rooms and put in the kitchen has been perfect for my current, like, it's kind of like my current loves of cookbooks. So whatever I want to grab easily, I just put them in here and it's so handy. But this one here, it's the, um, the Half-Baked Harvest book. I've made this before and I think I even vlogged about it and it was delicious. So I think I'm going to make this chicken gyros again. Everybody here seemed to like it. And then I also pulled out my How to Feed a Family cookbook, which is a Sweet Potato Chronicles cookbook by Laura. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Co and Sari Marsh. I'm not sure. But they've got great recipes. I love this book. It's also a really fun one to just flip through. And I've made this before and also everyone loved it. So beef lettuce wraps are probably going to be on the menu. I think I might make homemade pizza because I haven't done that in ages. And I'm also thinking about chili. So I like to pick more things than I'm actually probably going to make because that way I can just make what I feel that day. And um, yeah, sometimes I change my mind. So I like to have options, make sure I have stuff in the freezer. So if I want to make chili, I can, or if I want to make pizza I will have the ingredients so I am going to head out pick up a few groceries for the week and then come back and try to get myself back into my work
later now. My day is winding down. We are just waiting for dinner to be ready. I've got something in the Instant Pot, which was completely off of my recipe list, but it's how it goes sometimes. I got my groceries done. I also went to Costco, got gas, got stamps, did all these little nagging things that I needed to do. And I feel so much better. It took me a while to put everything away, but I don't know about you guys, but when I have a stocked fridge and pantry and something in the cake dome, I feel so much better. So I'm about to shred the pork for some pulled pork sandwiches tonight. I've got a chocolate chip zucchini loaf in the oven. So I'm setting myself up well for the week. I just feel so much better than I did this morning. I even squeezed in a little bit of creative time this afternoon with my journal and I've been prepping some pages and I'm gonna do something really nerdy tonight. I'm going to take out all of my pencil cases and pouches, my leather ones, and just reorganize them a little bit because I love doing that. And then I will be set up to steal some more creative moments throughout the week. I've got to take James to soccer right after dinner and then I'm getting straight into my pajamas and either I could knit, I could read, or I could do some journaling. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I think I'm gonna say goodnight now and uh, finish this vlog tonight. And I will see you guys next time. Again, 
I thought I was done yesterday. I finished up the vlog and I didn't end up editing anything last night and I woke up and had such a wonderful morning with a new practice that I thought I would share. And I had another few things that popped into my head that I wanted to share with you guys too. So I've got one, a little bit more of me today. So the first thing I did today was woke up a little bit early and made myself my coffee and sat in my super cozy chair, which I'm loving. And I started my daily practice of reading Simple Abundance. I shared this book yesterday and I absolutely love it. I think I had an old copy at one point, but I'm excited to have the revised copy. And I ended up reading yesterday's and today's entry because they are daily. And I'm really, really enjoying it. And I think this is going to be a wonderful way to start my day. I think I definitely am a person who already finds gratitude in everyday things. I really have been practicing that since I had Camden and he's 16 now. And I'm a pretty positive person. And so I already have that kind of nature about me, but I'm human and I get bogged down and I forget. And so this is a wonderful way to really practice gratitude. Um, I think I'm really going to enjoy starting my day this way. So I wanted to share because it brought me so much peace this morning and started my day so well. And the entry for today, which is January 14th, was actually about a gratitude journal and keeping one. And I have tried this in the past, haven't really kept up with it, but because I'm planning on keeping up with this book, I think I'm going to start a new gratitude journal. I've been wanting to start another kind of art journal on wellness, but I didn't really know what I would put in it. And I've been inspired by some other things, um, especially um, Courtney Diaz, who is Little Raven Inc. And I follow her on Patreon. I so enjoy her channel. She is um, an artist, journaler. I will put her uh, Patreon information down below if you are interested. I've been finding a lot of joy in that this month and so I wanted to share that with you because I think I'm going to share a couple of my favorite things along with this little bit that I'm filming today and Courtney is definitely one of my favorite things this month. She, um, even if I'm too tired, to journal. She just provides so much inspiration and entertainment with her videos. So I found another Hobonichi cover that I had in my little basket upstairs. I purchased it just a little while ago and then I ended up getting the butterfly one that I'm currently using my planner in. I found that one for half price and it was kind of a gift from Glenn for Christmas. So I put this one aside, but it is so gorgeous. It is a zip around Hobonichi cover and I found this one, uh, it's on the Hobonichi website, but I got this one on the Wonder Pens website, which is a shop in Toronto that I love. I think a lot of the shops are sold out of a lot of the covers by now, but you may be able to find it. i um, trying to remember the name of this one. I can't remember, but it's got these beautiful, I think it's called Woodbird actually. There are these beautiful birds on the cover. And so I have another Hobonichi copy that I'm going to put in here. And it's going to be my wellness and gratitude journal. So I'm really thinking that this is going to kind of sit together and each morning I will read the entry for that day. And then as soon as the kids go to school, I will eat my breakfast and do a little bit of work in my gratitude journal. I'm really excited about that. And while I was thinking about that this morning, I kind of remembered a few of my favorite things and I thought I would share them with you right now too. So I do my own nails. I am not very great at it. My cuticles are a mess and they need to be touched up right now. But I found a new color and I don't know if it's readily available or if it was in a collection. I just found it at the drugstore. I got it at Shoppers Drug Mart and it's an SC color. And I'm all about this green right now. I've got it on, but it definitely is starting to wear off. It is this beautiful green and it is called In Plain View. 
can get it to focus. No. Nope. Well, it's called In Plain View. I'll put it up on the screen for you. And it is my new favorite color. I've actually had to remove it and then I reapplied it again because I love it that much. Um, another thing I wanted to share is my new favorite hand cream, which is this Kiehl's one. And I think I did mention this. It was in my advent calendar and it is amazing. It was a huge 75 milliliter tube that was in my advent calendar and I've been loving this. It lives in my purse, or my tote bag. And when I grabbed it out of my tote bag, I found one other thing and I probably have shared these before, but I am in love with these Bagu shopping bags. I have all of those reusable shopping bags from the grocery stores and I usually keep them in my car, but they are really hard to fold up and sometimes I don't put them back in my car in time for being at a store again. And so I'm kind of stuck and I've had to purchase plastic bags, which I really hate. I'm really tired of purchasing plastic bags because I forgot my bags. So. I have quite a few of these now. I keep them in my car, like in the side of my car door. And I keep this one in my um, tote bag. It does have a little envelope pouch, but I find it folds up so nicely that you don't really have to, um, you don't have to put it in the carrying case. But I just purchased this other one. It is a really, really small one, which has also come in really handy. So it comes in these little pouches. And I usually get mine on well.ca. I love that website. And this is just a really tiny one. So you can easily keep this in any purse or handbag you have. I fold this one back up and I put it in the little pouch it comes with. And that way I am never without at least one or two bags in my purse for those days when I completely forget to bring my shopping bags to the grocery store. And these ones are just as strong and they hold a lot of groceries. So those are just a few of my favorite things. Um, I am going to make, I just had to run to the door for a second because I had a package delivered of some beautiful fabrics and I can't remember exactly where I was, but I'm going to round off my little favorites segment here with a few of my favorite inspiring people right now. So I mentioned Courtney already and I will mention her again. I subscribe to her Patreon page and or Patreon channel. I'm not sure what you call it. She is Courtney Diaz there and her videos of journaling and art have been so inspiring to me, probably especially at this time of year because I'm starting all my new books and she just put out a video recently on sort of a wellness gratitude personal journal, which is kind of inspiring me with my gratitude journal that I just showed too. And another person who has been completely inspiring me lately is Chelsea from the Legacy Fiber Arts Duo. Um, I subscribe to Chelsea's Patreon page or channel as well and I've been loving it for months, but particularly over this holiday season and the winter months, her knitting and her art journaling and even just her holiday vlogmas was so very inspiring and kind of got me on my sock knitting kick. And um, it's just been really, really fun. And when I'm really tired at night, too tired to, um, create in my journals or knit. I just put on one of their videos and it's just a little bit of a treat for myself. So I've been really enjoying both of them. On YouTube, I have been enjoying a couple of people um, that I've been following for a long time, but just particularly right now, maybe it, again, it's the time of year, but I follow Minnie Small. I don't know if it's small or Minnie Smalls. I'll put her link below as well. I really enjoy her channel and I just watched a recent video that she put up on YouTube about being productive for the new year, uh, running a business at home, like working at home. I found a few really good tips in that. I will link that actual video below because I thought it was just, it's just nice to watch and also had a few really good tidbits on things that you can do to kind of stay productive through the day. Another one that I've been loving, 
I have mentioned a long time ago, but I wanted to mention him again because I've been loving catching up on his Vlogmas. I didn't really have a chance to over December. And so the last couple of weeks, I watched his entire Vlogmas and a few of his other vlogs. And it is Christopher Allen on YouTube. I think it was Eric that introduced me to his channel quite a while ago and we got very into his videos. He is such a kind-hearted, warm person that you really, really, I feel confident that he is just the nicest person in real life too. You, you just can't fake that. He is an amazing, warm, kind person and he has so much great content. He loves to decorate his home. He did so much stuff for Christmas. It's a beautiful home. Um, he's very into planners and organization and wellness and all kinds of stuff. He's just like such a treat to watch and I love his purchases. So it's always fun to see what he is picking up. And so those are two people that I've also been finding so much joy in. I'm going to try to link all of these below. I know I usually put them on the screen, but it might be um, hard to find certain people. So I will do that. I think I'm going to make myself a quick breakfast and sit in my creative office back there, which is actually my dining room, and clean up a bit from my mess yesterday and kind of plan out the rest of my day. I've got a little bit of work to do. I'm going to try to I think I'm going to use some of the tips from the mini smalls video that I watched to do a little bit of time blocking today and make sure that I am balancing my day with work stuff and then also some quiet time and creative time for myself too. I've just made myself a bowl of oatmeal. It is buried underneath all of those bananas and strawberries. And I'm going to eat it in here while I tidy up my office. These are knitting pouches, so I'm going to find a home for those. Uh, I brought my gratitude journal here, and I think I'm just going to set aside a few little supplies so that I can use easily in there. This is actually another Hobonichi. This is the smaller size. It is an A6, and this one belongs to Camden. He got it for Christmas. You can see the size difference there. I'm surprised that he picked this cover, but I love that he did. And he's a bit of a drawer. And so I am going to try to, instead of him drawing on loose sheets of paper, we got him that so that we'll have a little book that we can keep of all of his drawings afterwards. We've done it in the past. We bought the boys their own Hobonichis, the little nylon ones, when they were young and we went on a big vacation and it was just so much fun and I still have the inserts and I look at them sometimes and I just love it. So this is where I did a little bit of journaling yesterday and I wanna clean this up and I'm going to reorganize some of these pouches. Um, this is something else that I got recently and it's a favorite thing. It's called the Faux Memo. I got it on Amazon and I was completely inspired by, um, I mean, it's not that exciting, but it's just a little black and white printer that's like a thermal printer. So there's no ink in here. I don't know if that's how you explain it, but there's basically just a little roll of sticker paper that looks like a receipt that you'd get um, when you're shopping. And you can print black and white photos or quotes. You can type in lists, anything that you have on your phone, you just get the app for this and you can print it. And it's super easy, really cute and handy. And I've been loving printing off just little quotes and things to put into my daily journal. So I'm going to enjoy my breakfast or brunch and clean this up.
finished my little tidy up and pencil pouch reorganization and that was so much fun. So I put a little pile over here of stickers and cards and papers, a couple of photos and things, and these little brass clips. Those are all going to be for my gratitude journal. So I'm just gonna find a little pouch. I'm pretty sure I have a plastic envelope kind of pouch upstairs. And I'm gonna set that aside together along with this little booklet that I got at Paper Plus Cloth. And you can just use these plastic sleeves to keep little cards or stickers. Mine are mostly stickers right now. And I removed a bunch of them to put in another case, but I've got lots of cute stickers and things that I think will be a part of my gratitude journal. And, oh, I found this. I purchased this not that long ago and I forgot to fill it up. If you like washi tape, this is a little washi tape dispenser where you can take a little bit of your washi tapes, roll them up and carry them with you in a pencil pouch or if you're traveling, which I thought was amazing. This is the packaging for it. It's called Mako. Um, if you go to Etsy and Google, or not Google, but if you search Mako washi tape, you might find it. Um, otherwise, I believe the shop that I found it in was called Japanesey, oh, what was it? Japanesey Shopper. I'll put it up on the screen um, to make sure that I got that right. Um, and then I also pulled out my cute little Kida washi tape holder. So it's another little booklet I found on Etsy. I can't remember which shop I got this one in. I think it was a different shop, but it's specifically made to hold your Kida washi tape booklet. So I've been collecting these for quite a while. They're just little samples of washi tape. And this little case holds them all. So you can just put in the books that you have if you have them. And I thought that's really cute as an on the go supply so that I'm just really trying to make this easy for me. If I'm watching a movie at night, I can just grab a pouch, grab some washi um, or this little book, a couple of little papers and sit on the couch and do some journaling. And uh, I'm just gonna put all my pouches back in this basket. I shared it before, I've just got my watercolors. This pouch, um, this holds my pencil crayons. This holds my fountain pens. This was the new piece that I got just before Christmas and I really love it. It's so beautiful. I just kind of um, checked what I had in there and put in a couple of extra things that were missing. And this can also be um, a quick journaling pouch if I wanna grab this one and I don't feel like the bigger one. Either one of these will work. And I had this one left over with some gel pens and a couple of my favorite highlighters, which are the mild liners. Um, and I think I'm going to bring this one upstairs because I have my work planner or my Hobonichi Weeks that I am sort of using to keep track of my studio work. Um, so I think I'm going to take that one up there for that. So that's it, I'm done. Now it is time to pack this up, put it away, and get to my studio to do some cutting. It's quite a bit later now. It's dark out and I spent the afternoon in my studio doing some work. And before I have to make dinner, I just sat down and I cast on for my Kobo cat. Just started it, but I'm already really loving this color and these yarns. I showed them earlier, it's the Legacy Fiber Arts color and an antique lace, and it's just knitting up beautifully. So I'm casting that on, I've knit just two rows, and I think if I feel like it, I might also cast on my second sock tonight, just to get them both on the needles so that I have projects readily available to pick up throughout the week. I think I'm actually going to call this a night for real this time. I am gonna wrap it up here and say good night. But I did actually wanna ask you guys if you like this format of a vlog slash podcast, because I think I really enjoy it. I feel like I can share more interesting things and it just feels a little bit more fun to me rather than the traditional podcast where I'm sitting 
staring at the camera, kind of going through project after project. But I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but I think I kind of like this format. You can let me know if you have a preference in the comments and um, maybe I'll do them like this from now on, I'm not too sure. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.